Well, I think we're going to get started. Chairman Connell is uh, supposed to show up, and you guys know how this afternoon works. And most of the time, people are late, but we're going to start. And I want to start by thanking everybody who's here, especially the folks who are behind me. This is an important issue. Uh, for years, uh, I have heard from veterans at home and across this country that have been counting on us to pass the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act. These veterans have served our country bravely in Vietnam, but we're still awaiting recognition. Let's let this clear. Anyway, these Vietnam veterans have bravely served this country in Vietnam, but they're still awaiting recognition for the federal government for the service uh, and, and, and the benefits that they have earned and that their, they and their families were entitled to. Uh, Republicans, Democrats, independents, veteran service organizations worked in good faith to push the Blue Water Navy Bill over the finish line, winning a long overdue victory for these veterans living with exposure to Agent Orange. Now we got to make sure the VA keeps it, uh, keeps up its end of the bargain by actually issuing the benefits that are due to these veterans. We're all here today because we're concerned. And I don't know that I feel that same level of concern from the VA. The VA needs to continue to process the claims of those veterans who are already deemed eligible under the law. Right now, the VA is instead issuing a stay on these claims a decision that only further delays the delivery of critical health care and will contribute to an influx of claims waiting in the wings. If the VA stops, stalling those claims can be managed uh, by the processors today. In addition, the VA has dragged their feet in adding health conditions to the presumptive list for herbicide exposure. We've already seen the toll taken on Blue Water Navy veterans forced to wait decades. Veterans suffering from these service-related illnesses shouldn't have to wait another day. So it's pretty simple. Today, we're telling the administration to end the wait. End the wait for the men who return home from Vietnam War only to find their country wouldn't give them the treatment and the benefits that they desperately needed. End the wait for red tape on these presumptive benefits and let our veterans access the care that they've earned and that they need. We're past due when it comes to providing these veterans who sacrificed so much for our freedom. And we won't stop fighting until we get them the benefits that they have earned. This is a big issue. It's an issue that the VA needs to step up and lead on. We have done what we needed to do, both through Congress and through the courts, to make sure that they have provided the veterans the benefits that they've earned. Now they need to provide those benefits. Time is of the essence. Uh, I don't know if Chairman Takano's here yet, is he? Anybody from my crew? He's on his way crossing now. So. He's crossing like how many minutes away? Mm -hmm. uh, Shane, do you want to you want to say a few words? And, uh, then we'll let you follow you. Yeah. I'm Shane Lerman, DAV Deputy National Legislative Director for Benefits. I'm pleased to join my fellow VSO leaders, veterans, and members of the Senate and the House to stand up for Blue Water Navy veterans and their survivors, some who are with us here today. For more than two decades, Navy veterans who have been exposed to Agent Orange while aboard ships off the coast of Vietnam were denied equal access to health care and benefits because in 1997, VA incorrectly decided to reverse course and removed their concession of exposure to Agent Orange. Three months ago on June 25th, the entire veterans community celebrated when Congress passed and President Trump signed into law the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019. However, less than a week later, our joy turned to dismay when VA Secretary Wilkie issued a blanket stay that stopped all processing 
all benefit claims by Blue Water Navy veterans, including those already eligible to receive Agent Orange related health care and benefits based on the court's decisions in Procopio issued in January nine months ago. In response, a United VSO community appealed to Secretary Wilkie, calling on him to lift or modify the blanket stay, particularly for those veterans who are terminally ill, over the age of 85, or impoverished, as well as those who already have sufficient evidence to grant benefits based solely on the Procopio decision. We have recently received a response from the Secretary, and it is apparent that our pleas have fallen on deaf ears. So today, DAV, together with Veterans of Foreign Wars, Vietnam Veterans of America, Paralyzed Veterans of America, the Fleet Reserve Association, AMVETS, Military Order of the Purple Heart, Military Officers Association of America, and Blinded Veterans Association are calling directly on President Trump to end the wait for Blue Water Navy Vietnam veterans. As chief executive charged with faithfully executing the nation's laws, President Trump has the authority and the responsibility to change the secretary's decision and allow VA to begin processing Blue Water Navy claims now. Although this injustice did not begin during his administration, President Trump can and should end the wait today. I will now introduce Mr. Bobby Daniels from Missouri, who served in the Navy from 1960 to 1964, including service aboard the USS Lexington, an aircraft carrier deployed to Vietnam. Together with his wife, Judy, he has been battling prostate cancer, a disease linked to Agent Orange. But because of the blanket stay, Bobby must continue to wait until at least January 1st before VA will even begin processing his claim. But January may be too late for Bobby, as his prostate cancer has been found to be terminal and incurable. Bobby made the difficult trip from Missouri to be here today because he wants to speak out for his fellow Blue Water Navy veterans, and especially for their survivors, like his wife, Judy. Bobby? Thank you for being here. <coughs> I'm not much of a spokesman, but what you're going to hear is coming from the court. I'm not but one of many veterans that are in this status. And I'll make this brief and to the point. Like many of my shipmates, I felt like we have finally landed a major victory in June when he signed the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act into law. After decades of waiting, we finally had hope that our service and sacrifices would be recognized. But less than a week went by before they pulled a loving rug from beneath us and snatched the victory away. It hurt. When I learned the VA Secretary had placed the state of Blue Water Navy claims it felt like somebody sledgehammered me in the mouth, in, in the mouth. Which, by the way, I've had that pain. I got all the teeth knocked out in the service. Still no pay. I live with chronic pain, with cancer inside of me, that I can hardly endure the pain and the misery that goes with it. But what I cannot deal with is that we Vietnam veterans have been forgotten and abandoned by the VA. 
even though we suffer illness linked to our military service, the VA rather delay our claims until we're too weak to fight, which is not the case, or simply wait until us, we are gone and our voices fade away in silence. They don't know how tough us, us old boys can be. My loving wife, Judy, who could not be here with me today, a former school teacher, has been by my side for 56 years. Like every couple, we struggle through tough times together, including taking out a second mortgage on the home for medical expenses that we did not qualify for at the time and had to go to private sector at the Cancer Center in MD Anderson, Houston, Texas. My biggest fear now is leaving her behind to struggle through tough times alone. This is a thought I cannot bear and in reality she shouldn't have to face these issues. Sorry, people, the vertigo is a little bit shaky here, and I'm doing my best. Now, this is how it's affected me as a personal individual. Sometimes late at night, after my wife has gone to bed, I get up in a rural area that I live and I scream into the darkness so that's where I'm at. I have so much fear and anxiety it's, I can't pronounce that word right now, I'm sorry. Bottled up inside me not knowing how long I'll be here and not knowing how my wife and son will be able to survive without my help financially. You get down to it, a dollar talks. This country, I guess, is based on factuals. It's a burden no one should ever have to feel. It is far past time, decades to my opinion, to do right by the blue water sailors and veterans and other veterans in need. If the VA won't stand up, then we need Mr. President to take the lead and get the done job that deserving veterans need to have. This comes from the heart, people, and it's not only about my case, I'm just an illustration many of them out there who a young lady will also give a testimony. I'm glad to be here. God bless America. Thank you, Bobby. Those, those are some incredibly heartfelt words. Thank you for taking the time to be here and share your story with us. It's not all about me, it's the other boys. Thank you. I'm Ryan Gallucci, National Veterans Service Director for the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the VFW. And after hearing a story like Bobby's, we have to ask why is VA doing this? At a time when VA should be building trust among veterans and working as many claims as they possibly can, Decisions like this stay only erode trust and put VA further behind in delivering timely benefits for all veterans. We know VA is working on some tools to help process claims in January, and that's perfectly reasonable. However, as Shane said, we also know that some of these claims can be granted today. We still
started to see grants right after the courts ordered VA to do so under the Procopio v. Wilkie decision. But all that momentum came to a grinding halt on July 1st. BFW service officers came together last week for training, and I got to hear from our advocates who sit face to face with those affected by the stay. It's hard to look veterans like Bobby and survivors like Claudia in the eye and tell them that they have to wait even longer. It's even harder when you know they're fighting a terminal disease or facing a financial hardship and you can't give them a legitimate reason why. One of our BFW service officers in Mississippi, Robert Lanford, is an affected veteran. He's seen this issue as both a veteran and an experienced advocate and wanted me to carry his message forward. Veterans expect this to be fixed. The organizations here today represent thousands of veterans like Bobby and Robert, but it's not just the veterans who this hurts. We must also talk about the hardship for survivors affected by the delay. And I'll be introducing one such survivor, Mrs. Claudia Holt, wife of Blue Water Navy Vietnam veteran Frank Holt, pictured here, who died on May 13th of this year, while VA was still considering whether or not to appeal the Procopio decision. Frank Holt served in the Navy from November 1960 to November 1964, including service on board the USS Pritchett during Vietnam. For two decades, Frank suffered from illnesses, including lung cancer, which he claims are related to his exposure to Agent Orange while serving offshore Vietnam. But like Bobby Daniels, Robert Lanford, and other Blue Water Navy veterans, Frank's condition would not have qualified for Agent Orange's presumption until VA accepted the court's decision. Now that Frank is gone, Claudia has applied for survivor benefits based on the Procopio decision and under but because of the blanket stay, Claudia must continue to wait until at least January before VA will even look at her claim. Claudia drove almost three hours to be here so she could speak out for her husband of 42 years, as well as other Blue Water Navy veterans and their spouses. Claudia, thank you for joining us here today. Good afternoon. My husband passed away on May the 13th suffered 19 years with illness. I had long since given up my career as a nurse to help provide the care he needed. Because of my professional background, I knew when I first saw Frank's scans, he didn't have much time left. I also knew he was worried about leaving me behind and what hardship his death would be placed on me. Before he died, he told me I, I would need to fight for survivor's benefits. He said, fought for me, now you fight for you. And now here I am at 78 years old, worried about how I will pay my bills or whether or not I will lose my home, keep food on the table, lights overhead. Worried because I couldn't get an answer from the VA. How sad that the VA will let a veteran die with this burden looming over them. How shameful that they, they let my husband die not knowing what would happen to his family. Our nation's veterans deserve far better than this. There is no reason that the VA cannot decide my case and others like mine today. What they have simply chosen not to, and this is wrong. I lost my husband. How much more will I have to lose until the VA makes the decision? My husband told Frank told me to fight for what was right. So that today I am honoring his memory as best as I can. I am here to ask the question on his behalf and on behalf of so many other veterans and surviving spouses. Secretary Wilkie, why are you continuing to make us wait? If the secretary won't change it, Mr. President, we need you to lift the stay. I know that Frank would be proud of us. He would be grateful to everyone gathered here, fighting for what he could make happen, doing his own lifetime. Please, we must act now because before it's too late. There are other blue water baby veterans out there, like Frank, who are living out their final days and taking their last breath without knowing what will happen to their loved ones. We must honor our veterans properly and lift the stay on the Blue Water Navy Cleans today. We 
were assured by top VA officials back in February, right after the Procopio decision, that they were ready to implement whatever indeed happened. And we were assured in March. And we were reassured in April that they were ready to go. As we were in May, as we were in June, and suddenly at the first week of July, a stay is put on. We wrote and asked why. And we never have gotten that letter answered with uh, anything that makes sense. So we say now to the president, Mr. President, it is ultimately your responsibility because VA is not issued. What are they going to do for the people who die between now and January 1? As we all know, the claim dies with the veteran. And so the question about whether or not the, the survivors are going to be able to keep the house, whether they're going to be able to survive and have some kind of an income stream, although, although it's modest, is something that hangs over those veterans who serve their country well and need to be recognized um, for what they have done and what they have suffered as a result of exposures in military service. That is our call to the you, Mr. President. You're of our generation, and we urge you to act. We're now going to hear from one of our great champions, uh, along with Senator Tester, is Chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, the Honorable Mark Takano. Congressman. Well, thank you, Rick Weidman. Thank you for the work you do on behalf of our Vietnam veterans. In June, we celebrated a landmark achievement and passed the Blue Water Navy Act of 2019 to finally grant benefits to the tens of thousands of veterans who, for more than 40 years, were denied benefits they earned while serving off the coast of Vietnam. This bill was emblematic of what Congress should be, a bipartisan body that works with stakeholders across the ideological spectrum to deliver for the American people and to deliver for our veterans. We. And as we look forward to the Blue Water Navy Act going into effect in January, we understand VA may need assistance as they consider the challenge before them. We want to support their preparation efforts to ensure the implementation process goes smoothly. We want to see VA succeed by developing a comprehensive plan that anticipates an influx of claims, a plan that coordinates with the Department of Defense and assesses what resources might be necessary for processing claims. Our hope was to do this together. But the little information VA has, VA has given us so far is not enough. They refuse to participate in roundtables or to share specific plans with Congress. We anticipate VA will need additional employees to process claims and employees in the field tell us that they may need hundreds of new employees to do the work. We ask VA what they need, but we're still waiting for an answer. In the meantime, Vietnam, Vietnam era veterans are still sick and are facing delays for their needed benefits and care. After celebrating the signing of the Blue Water Navy Act, there was a huge moment of time. We learned that VA intended to stay all claims without exception until January 2020. While we recognize that VA needs time to plan for full implementation of the law in January, we must ask whether VA should exercise any discretion. Is it really necessary to stay all of these claims? Or can we help with some of these veterans today? Too many of these veterans are suffering from debilitating illnesses related to herbicide exposure and cannot wait until January for assistance. For benefits that were stopped in the past, relief could be as easy as reinstating a previously established service connection. Delaying benefits for every Blue Water Navy claimant is not the answer. So my plea is to the VA. 
let's work together so we can finally get these veterans the benefits they've earned. Congress appropriated and President Trump signed into law, signed into law uh, the bill which would get these veterans that, those benefits. They have already waited far too long. Thank you very much. Now I'll open it up uh, for questions. Senator, um, do you have any indication yet from the VA on uh, January 2020 how long it would take them to get cranked up to actually start processing claims? Also, Senator, do uh, you have uh, any indication from them, this is going back to have Shulkin, of when they will uh, expand the uh, conditions for, uh, for uh, Agent R? reasons we're here is that, look, I've been on a VA committee now since January 2007. I know what their budget has done over the last 13 and a half years, and I, and I will tell you that they got the money. They just need to get the commitment to get these folks, folks served. Um, there is no reason why there has to be a total stay. Um, there is, quite frankly, at this moment in time, no reason why everybody from the Blue Water Navy here can't get their benefits. But if we want to cut them a break, then we could say, you know what, at least give some of the people their benefits. But the truth is, we didn't pass this bill, so some of the people would get their benefits. We've got an all-volunteer army and an all-volunteer defense force in this country. And people are watching. They're watching what happens to our Vietnam. Bobby talked about taking a second mortgage out of his house, for God's sake. Claudia talked about her husband leaving in uncertainty. Not knowing this is a complicated life enough. These folks serve. They were impacted by their service. Their benefits need to be there. It's an obligation as a country we've had. We've done our job. The courts have done their, their job. And now they need to provide the benefits. And as far as I'm concerned, they should start right away, not January 2020. And if there's any excuses in January 2020, I may pull what little hair I have out. I like you. <laughs> well, you know, I was just uh, at another event uh, with veterans this morning, and uh, one veteran came up to me and said he'd lost three of his buddies uh, who were exposed to Agent Orange. And I just have to tell you, there is a, a, a level of frustration among our Vietnam veterans. Because it's already taken too long for us to recognize uh, the Blue Water Navy, uh, the Blue Water Navy members were, the service members were exposed uh, to herbicides, and it took too long uh, for the, you know, the original uh, group of veterans to be recognized. And um, the man broke down into tears and said, "I just have to get this off my chest." Um, I, stood, I stood there and I took it. I knew he was he was uh, just really angry. Just know that this anger uh, has been intensified by uh, this total stay. This total stay is not necessary, and I understand. I understand the, uh, the sentiment that every single veteran that's on those Navy ships off the territorial waters during the time period specified should get their benefits now. I understand that, but at the very least, Mr. Secretary, Mr. President. We need to we need to get uh, uh, help uh, to the sickest, and the oldest. We cannot wait any longer. It's, it's, it's cruel. It's, it's cruel and unusual. Other questions? Have yes, either of you or any of the VSOs reached out to the White House and heard anything back directly from them? I know a lot of them have just contacted the VA, but I think we've got to talk to the administration. Well, I won't speak for the VSOs. I can tell you more often have been in contact with them regularly about they're going to ramp up, when they're going to get going, and the fact that, uh, and I've had many veterans tell me that the VA is trying to outlive me, and they might be true on this one, and so it's time. But, but this 
is no secret. This isn't done in a vacuum. The fact is, uh, the VA understands that time is of the essence here. We're expecting them to provide the benefits and get the job done. Well, I, I haven't uh, directly tried to reach uh, the White House. And we don't have a lot of time to go on cable TV to make a tweet in person uh, directly. Uh, but uh, we have been in touch with the VA. We've invited the VA at least twice uh, to come and uh, talk with us in uh, in very non-threatening settings, settings in, a, in, a, in a round table setting. And they refused. Uh, they refused to even acknowledge that we uh, that we uh, had made the invitation. They, refused, they did not respond to our original invitation. So um, I I am puzzled as to why uh, there they won't be. Uh, more, more cooperative. Look, I, I, I don't want to have my first, my first move uh, to be uh, about uh, oversight. I'd rather it be a partnership. Um, you know, an adversarial oversight sort of situation doesn't serve our veterans. We, we, we want to know uh, what they need in order to, uh, to get these claims filled out. Um, and if they're worried, we're going to pounce on them because they get it wrong. You know, we can work out a plan to make sure that the most needy veterans uh, can get acted upon right away. And I don't know if the VA is either being not better than the VA to respond to it. Do you have to contact me? Uh, actually, uh, earlier this morning, DAV, DFW, DVA, and several service organizations here, we did uh, send a letter over to the White House in reference to our concerns about the stay and asking that they end it today. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for being here.